Annie. Did you think you were going to get out of it or what? <laughs> I'll wait. It's okay. I'm in no hurry. Do you mind opening us up with prayer, please? Father, we just want to give you praise and glory and honor for the morning. Lord, you've set a day before us. We ask, Lord, that you just walk with us as we uh, not only share the word, but as we talk the word. And Father, we're asking that you just anoint Amen. David in a special way this morning. Amen. Us yes. the word. And Father, we're asking that you tune our ears. Amen. To hear Thank you, Father. What you have to say and for our growth. And Lord, we're going to give you thanks, praise, glory, and honor for it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. I am here. Amen. Thank Do you, Father. Are you here? Are you listening to me, my children? My sons, my daughters, are you listening? Amen. I want you to hear what I have to say to you this morning through my servant. It will loosen. It will loosen those bonds, those bondages. It will set you free. My word is life and health. Listen this morning. Be still. Let your heart receive from me this morning. Because I love you. I love you. Don't ever doubt that. Don't ever doubt that I love you and I want to give you so much, my children. Just receive, receive from me every day. Just receive. I have it here ready to give to you. All you have to do is say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for that. I love you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. David, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but when I closed my eyes, I saw the um, like going into someone's ear canal. I don't know if someone's having a problem with their ear or not, but you are, Annie. Mm -hmm. The Lord just showed me that, you know, going into the ear canal. So Annie says she's. Anybody else? Father, you created the ears. You designed them perfectly. So, Father, right now, we come to you right now. Whatever this ear problem is, Father, you have it all under control. Thank you, Father. Lord, we're going to have your will in our lives. We're going to have your will in our lives. We're going to have your will in our lives. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father. We're going to have your will in our lives. No matter what the devil ties a lie to us, we're going to have your will. You're in control. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you that you've taken care of that ear issue, and we're going to have your blessings over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 
Amen. Um, I know that um, I know that time and time again I will ask some things of the church and I know that some days that you all can't physically be there and that's totally fine and I asked the church a couple weeks ago to come support our beloved sister <clears throat> yesterday and some of you came and I want to thank you thank you thank you for that you don't know how much that means to me as the church supporting our brothers and sisters um, Amen. and Kenny, I'm going to pick on you if you don't mind. Um, Kenny came over and he said, I'm here to support the church. And I just, that blessed me. Amen. That blessed the socks off of me. And I, I just, I want to thank you, Kenny, for doing that. You had to take time out of your day to support the church. You did. But you did it, and I thank you for that. It's, it's an awesome thing to do. It's an awesome thing to do. So please don't get me wrong. The ones that did not come, I'm not mad at you. I understand that things happen, okay? That's, I, I, but I asked, and you all responded, and that's, that's all I can ask for. I thank you for that. <clears throat> Acts 20. Are you ready? Yes. Ready. You'll find out. Yes. <laughs> ready for the word of God. Yes. You're going to find out. <laughs> you say, uh-oh, what did I do? Acts 20, 7 through 12. Now, on the first day of the week, Sunday, when we were gathered together to break bread, share communion, Paul began talking with them, intending to leave the next day. And he kept on with us with, with his message until midnight. Good luck. Get ready. Okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Are you all ready? Are you ready? <laughs> we don't have to leave at all. We can just stay right here. <laughs> now, there were many lamps in the upper room <clears throat> where we were assembled. And there was a young man named Eutychus lucky sitting in the windowsill he was sinking into a deep sleep <laughs> i look out around you all <laughs> and i just want to remind you that if you fall off your pew okay it might be a little farther farther fall than you thought <laughs> in a deep sleep and as Paul kept on talking, man, that makes me feel really good. <laughs> he fell asleep while he was talking. <laughs> like Paul kept on talking longer and longer. He was completely overcome by sleep, and he fell down from the third story. And he was picked up dead. But isn't it like God to fail us when we come do something for Him and we get into our own way? Isn't that like God to fail us that He's just going to let us die? I'm telling you, this is a perfect example of our life. We're trying to do the right thing for Him. But we're going to fail along the way. And in that failing, in that failing, we're not going to die. Amen. Good. Amen. We're not going to die. We are going to fail. We're going to fail him every day because his standard is way higher than ours. We have no clue how high his standard is. 
we have an idea. But the closer we get to him, the more we find out, oh my, we've been, we've been really far away, right? So, when you look at this, he was picked up dead. And then the man of God said, but Paul went down, threw himself on him and embraced him and said to those who are standing around, do not be troubled because he is alive. Now, I didn't see no sign of it. It didn't say that, right? He just told you not to be troubled. But you didn't see no immediate result, right? At least they don't tell us about it, right? There's no immediate result. So, as worried as Paul was, when Paul had gone back upstairs and had broken the bread and eaten, that's how excited he was over that whole situation. So he went back upstairs, started eating. Amen. Wasn't concerned at all about that person down there that was supposedly dead. Right? <clears throat> he talked informally and confidentially with them for a long time until Drake and until daybreak, in fact, and then he left. He still wasn't concerned. He still was not concerned. They took the boy Eutychus home alive and were greatly comforted and encouraged. They. They went and got him and they took him home Perfectly whole and healthy. Amen. Paul wasn't excited at all. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. He did exactly what he was supposed to do when he was supposed to do it and didn't think any more about it. Amen. I'm telling you, there's a lesson for us in that. Amen. Because when we do what we're supposed to do and trust him to do what he said he was going to do, we don't have to worry. Amen. Right. Because worry stops what we just did. It brings in fear and doubt. But Paul didn't have any of that. He had absolutely none of that. He was so concerned he went back to eating. He will back up what he said. He will back up what he promised. He will do it. Yep. Amen. Why do we let doubt and worry come in to what he promised us? Because we live in the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know after I left the funeral last night, or yesterday afternoon, Satan tormented me all afternoon and evening about, well, you really messed that one up. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> you said the wrong thing. What do I want to believe? Do I want to believe him? I was doing what I was supposed to do for Jesus Amen. yesterday. I'm not going to be dead if I mess up. If I mess up, I'm not going to be dead. He's going to take care of everything. Because I was doing for him. Doing for him. Not for me. Not for my good pleasure. But for his good pleasure. I don't have to listen to that trash anymore. I don't have to listen to it. 
What do I choose to listen to? It's amazing how he can scare us into listening to him. It's just amazing. But my God is better than that. John 10, 18. This is Jesus. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Amen. Jesus received a commandment from his Father. To give up his life for not himself. To give up his life for you. It wasn't about him. It wasn't about him at all. It was about you. What he was willing to do for you. You have received a command from your father. And his biggest commandment to you is believe. Amen. Believe. Do not doubt in your heart, but believe. Do not doubt in your heart, but believe. He wants you to believe. Guess what can't happen if you believe? Doubt can't come in. If you have the secure belief that everything he told you is the absolute truth, doubt can no longer be there. It can't be there. Amen. Listen to me, church. It can't be there. If you have the absolute truth in your heart, and do not doubt. Okay? That means you have the assurance that everything he told you, the assurance that everything he told you is the truth. Amen. Then it can't stay there. It can't stay there. There's no way possible for it to stay there. So how does that happen? Well, the flesh takes over, right? The flesh takes over. Boy, you really messed this one up. Boy, you really messed that one up. Boy, you really did this. Boy, you didn't do that when you were supposed to. Right? Have you all not heard that? Yeah. Huh? So the flesh starts worrying about, okay, well, what did I did right? And what did I did wrong? And, 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 and then you start taking your real mind off of what you were supposed to be worried about in the beginning. Is serving Him. He created you to serve. talked about this before. He's created you to serve. Amen. Yes. And, and not only to serve Him, but to serve His church. <clears throat> the world is very good at serving themselves, are they not? Amen. Huh? Matthew 9. While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshiped, worshiped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come 
and lay your hand on her, and she will live. How sure are you? How sure are you? How sure are you that he is able to do that? I'm telling you, if it's anything like me, that doubt comes in my head every second of every day. Well, you prayed for them and that didn't work. Or you did this and that didn't work. But you know, Satan's not as got a hold of me as much in that area as he used to. Because I'm going to go lay hands on somebody because God told me to. And it's not my job, as I went back to the first scripture that I read, it's not my job to worry. After I do what he told me to do, it's just to believe. That's the part we have a trouble with is we do what he tells us to do and if we don't see the results that we think that we're supposed to get, it starts to throw doubt and worry in there. Well, I must have messed up. No, you didn't. (coughs) You did exactly what you were supposed to do. And now it's up to him. Do you think you're doing it anyway? Do you think it's coming from you? No, it's not coming from you. It's coming from him. So he's the one that's going to back up his word. You don't have to worry about whether he's going to back up his word. He's going to do it. Believe me. That guy took on more pain and more beatings than you will ever, ever, ever have to go through. And no matter whether you live 100 years or 200 years, he went through more than you will ever, ever have to go through in a short amount of time. And he did that so you could trust him. Trust him with all your heart. There's no doubt If he's able to do that for me, to hang on that cross, and then while he's hanging there and they're spitting on him and they're they're mocking him, and and he looks down and he says, Father, forgive him. I wouldn't have done that. Lord, get him. (laughs) Right? Right. I'm already in pain and agony. Get him, Lord. You know he could have done that. And I am telling you right now, I have seen this vision in my head. I want you to picture this. That cross is right there and Jesus is hanging on that cross. Okay? And behind that cross, okay, in the spirit realm, I want you to look at all the angels with their swords drawn. Waiting for the word. And they keep looking up. We'll wipe them out, Father. You tell us, give us the word, we're going to wipe them all out. Jesus wouldn't let them. Jesus wouldn't let them. He had to do that. But the angels were ready and willing because they didn't know what was going on. It was hidden to them too. All they saw was their Jesus suffering. But they were ready. God has given you the opportunity to be one of those soldiers that is ready, willing, and able with their swords drawn to go to battle. Anytime you need to go to battle. 
And He's going to give you all the strength that you need. We can get better at this. We can get better at this. We're going to start getting better at this. We're going to get better at this. This walk is going to get better. We're going to get stronger. We're going to get stronger. And when the snake latches on, we're going to keep moving forward because it didn't even bother us anymore. We didn't focus on it. We didn't even give it a second thought. It's just snap. That was just Satan. That was just Satan. Who's he to stand against my God? Who is he? Right? Right. He's nobody. He has no teeth. He walks around like a roaring lion. There's no teeth in his face. Not to you. To the world, yes. Because when he looks at you, he's afraid of you because he sees Jesus. And I want him to look at me like the ones that said, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? And I want him to see me as Jesus. I want him to see that. Well, I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm the son of the most high God. That's who I am. Amen. And you cannot defeat me because my God has everything I need to defeat you. Amen. Everything. Amen. Do you think he loves you? Yes. Amen. Do you think he's a, he loves you enough to do that for you? Yes. yes. He does. He does. Amen. And he will. And he will continue. And he will continue until you get a hold of who you really are in him. You are going to change the world. You're going to change the world. Start claiming that. I asked Vesta to start saying, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Right? I asked her to start speaking that word. Well, if you want to speak a word, I have every weapon that I need. My God will supply all of my needs. That's what he said. So if I have all the weapons that I need, He's going to supply all of my needs. Amen. Yep. Right? Amen. Right. He's going to supply them all. Every weapon that I need, he's going to supply everything. Yes. He loves you. Amen. Father, I just thank you for your word. Lord, I hope I delivered the way I was supposed to, Father. Lord, if not, clean it up. I want them to hear you, not me, Father. But Father, I want to I be standing in front of that Satan's cohort and he look at me and see nothing but Jesus and turn around and scat. So Father, I want to become stronger in you. Lord, I want to become bolder in you. And Lord, I just thank you because you told me if I ask anything in your name, I will have it. So I'm asking, Father, fill me right now with your Holy Spirit, Father. Afresh and anew. And Lord, I just thank you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, church.